Hey guys, LP here with your jump volleyball training tip of the week. This week, I'm answering a question I got after the podcast episode, the technical timeout podcast episode with Brock Davida, former setter of the national team and assistant coach at the uh, University of Alberta with the men's team. So he was talking in the podcast about having slow hands and fast hands and was saying how having fast hands is really important. So in this video, I'm gonna let Brock explain to you what is the difference between the slow hands and the fast hands and why it is important. This is to answer a question I got after someone listened to the episode with Brock who wanted to know what the difference was. So I hope you enjoy this episode with Brock. Let me know um, how it went and I'll catch you next week for another tip of the week. Enjoy. So to give an idea of uh, what slow hands look like and what fast hands look like, we'll give you a demo first. So this will be slow hands. Okay. And this will be fast hands. Okay, now the, the issue with slow hands is that the, the contact generally, generally dips and that's the big problem. The actual release itself for most levels of play in Canada, if it's high, it's not as big of a deal. But if you're running a faster offense or if you're playing at say the level that Brett's playing, it can, it can cause connectivity issues and location and deception issues. So if, we, if Brett's gonna set a 31 from his normal high fast hand position, okay, that's gonna be easier to connect on than if the hands slow down and drop. The angle, like you'll see that is a lot steeper and that's gonna be more difficult for like a, for a middle to hit. The other thing is if you're running the speed to the outside from a fast hand position, okay, it's gonna accelerate out of his hands and kind of float at the end. With slow hands, it's not gonna do the same thing. Okay, so running speed is gonna, gonna be a little more difficult. With the back set is where some big problems come in because if when he's keeping fast hands, he's generating the offense from a high position. Now, Brett, do the same thing but slow hands, but don't let your contact point drop. Now, this isn't that big of an issue if you're playing you know, lower club levels or like working your way up, but as you reach maybe college, university, and national team, you can see how that, that tempo slowed down. Do it again, the same, the fast hands. So we got a good, do that one more time. A little more tempo, okay. Now the slow hands. So the tempo is going to be different. When those hands slow down, it gives a, a poor reference point for the guys that are going fast on attack. But what tends to happen with younger athletes when they use a slower contact is the, the contact point drops. It goes down to their chest and that'll look like this. Okay, and so that's going to create a loopier set. And if the athlete moves forward and does the same thing, they'll tend to arch their back early and flatten out the set too much. Okay, and then we have stuff shooting through the zone. So that would be the main issue. I would say globally, whatever your contact is like, fast, slow, that it, it shouldn't be dropping. But if it drops down to the chest, you're gonna be in a world of problems with your connectivity. Thanks, Brett.